Good evening. I am Joe Marinucci, a member of the uh, Global Cleveland Board of Directors, and I welcome you to the International Community Candidate Forum for mayor, uh, mayoral and ward council races. At Global Cleveland, we are excited to host this non-political, non-endorsement, community-centered conversation. We look forward to this discussion and the positive momentum for Cleveland's future that it will produce. If English is not your first language, please, please check the Zoom options bar for the interpretation function. If that option is available, we have live interpretation available, so please take advantage of it. Before I introduce our moderator and candidate, I would like to thank our partners. The partners include um, uh, Asia Inc., uh, Asia Town Cleveland, Badondo Community of Greater Cleveland, British American Chamber of Commerce of Ohio, Building Hope in the City, the City Club of Cleveland, Cleveland Council on World Affairs, Council on International Programs USA, Cleveland Cultural Gardens, Collaborative Chamber Alliance, Connecting Cleveland, Downtown Cleveland Alliance, Global Shapers Cleveland, the NCAA of Cleveland, Ohio Progressive Asian Women's Leadership, Refugee Response, Smart Development Inc., Us Together, USCRI Cleveland, and the Young Latino Network. Thank you all for helping us put this uh, program together and would not be possible without all of your support. Now, before I explain uh, the guidelines for the forum, we have a short video from Mo Kantner from our national partner, NAE, the New American Economy. Hello, and welcome to today's candidate forum with Global Cleveland. My name is Mo Kantner, and I'm the director of state and local initiatives at New American Economy. A New American Economy, we're a bipartisan research and advocacy organization that focuses on making the economic case for better immigration policies at the federal, state, and local levels. Now, immigration may feel like an abstract issue debated at the national level through very technical, political, and bureaucratic constraints, and that's partially true, but immigrant integration happens at the local level. How communities attract and welcome newcomers helps lay the foundation for whether a person stays, works, starts a small business, or raises a family. In Cleveland alone, there are over 125,000 immigrants. They pay over $1.3 billion in taxes and help fill workforce needs in healthcare, manufacturing, and other critical industries. They're also over 60% more likely than the U.S. born population to start a small business in Cleveland. They not only help fill workforce needs, they create jobs for other Americans. And that is something that can't be captured at the national level. Those impacts are happening on the ground every day in Cleveland's communities. Our local elected officials have a huge impact on people's day-to-day -day lives. And when policies are established that let everyone live up to their potential, everybody benefits. So thank you again for participating in this critical conversation and remember to vote. Thank, thank you, Mo, we really appreciate that. Uh, normally at this point, uh, I would go through the guidelines uh, for uh, today's discussion, but since we only have one candidate with us, uh, uh, Councilman Mike Polensic, well dispense with that. Um, and uh, just a note that uh, uh, Councilman Polensic, if you could limit your answers to two minutes uh, to each question, I think that would be helpful in terms of not only the uh, number of questions that John will, will ask you, but also uh, providing some Q&A from the audience as well. Um, Mike Polensic was born in the Glenville neighborhood on East 120th Street and raised in Collinwood. Graduated from Collinwood High School, Councilman Polensic has served on Cleveland City Council since 1978, representing Collinwood and the surrounding area for over 40 years. Um, thank you for joining us. Our moderator this evening is John Sinise. Uh, John is the managing partner of ChemJ's LLC, a firm providing international consulting services to exporters and importers in Northeast Ohio. He has more than 30 years of experience working for major multinational companies doing businesses across the globe. Without further ado, I will turn it over to John to, uh, to get to today's program. John. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and again, um, with uh, as we, was mentioned before, we only have one candidate today, so we will use the entire time with uh, Councilman uh, Polensic. Uh, Councilman, uh, we have a number of prearranged or pre-supplied uh, questions, so I will go through those in order. Again, please keep in mind that we're trying to keep the answers to about two minutes or less. So with that, I'll start with the first one. What is, your, what is your experience serving and interacting with the international community in your own community and Northeast Ohio at large? How has this shaped your understanding of your community and your role as a leader? 
Well, obviously, um, as a senior member of city council um, and my own family being of immigrants to uh, the city of Cleveland, I've had the pleasure to work with the immigrant community in all my years in, in public office, uh, which now totals 43 and a half. Um, I have a large uh, ethnic population, still Eastern European in my community of Lithuanians, Italians, uh, Slovenian, um, and, um, and, um, uh, and uh, did I say, I think I mentioned Lithuanians, Lithuanians, uh, oh, and, uh, and Germans with a large population of Germans, plus a large uh, population of African Americans. So we're all immigrants uh, to the city of Cleveland. So I, I really have enjoyed uh, working with uh, these groups and have sponsored in my time in city council many uh, and co-sponsored many uh, sister city relationships and partnerships with various cities across the world. So I've enjoyed that. I've been involved in uh, with international programs and all my time in city council. And um, I look forward to continuing that, uh, God willing. Uh, Cleveland is, has a very rich history of immigration. Uh, again, going back to my own family and what I see in my own community. On any given Sunday in my ward, you can hear church services in German, Lithuanian, Slovenian, and Italian. There's not many neighborhoods that can say that. So I'm very proud of that fact. And uh, again, I've, I've enjoyed greatly working with the international uh, and immigrant community. Thank you. Um, as an immigrant myself, I certainly have seen uh, what you described. And uh, it was uh, very pleasant for me to, to see when I moved to Cleveland many years ago that there was such a diverse community of people from other countries. Yeah. Um, our, Yes. Our next question is, um, our population loss from 2010 to 2018 would have been even worse if not for the 37,000 immigrants who moved into Cuyahoga County during that time. These new residents have offset the population loss by 45%. How, in your opinion, can we attract more immigrants to move here to continue this important trend? Uh, we have to be welcoming. Uh, we have to ha have uh, an open arm approach and one that reaches out and with all the various ethnic groups and, and, um, and agencies that are here now, especially um, um, homegrown groups uh, within the ethnic community. We have to be that, uh, that, that um, life preserver for those folks who come here to assist. I'm very much concerned about the population loss as the senior member uh, when I first came into city council, we were just under 700,000 people. So we have lost a substantial number of, of residents. And so, you know, the immigrant community um, can be a real, a, a real assistance to us in maintaining and growing our, our neighborhoods and our local economy. So we have to do everything we can, welcoming, helping in every which way we can. And I'd like to see a, a better partnership between the city and the county on, in this area. Um, so we can, we can have the programs in place because most people don't realize that the city of Cleveland does not provide social service programs. Those are all done through the county. So we need to partner with the county probably more than ever before to, um, to support the immigrant community, uh, the international community, and uh, try to grow our population base. It's critical. I will tell you, it's extremely critical. And we're gonna know very shortly uh, when the census results are released, supposedly um, at the end of this month or in sometime in September, we have a very good picture of, of where we're at uh, from a standpoint of population and what we need to do to attract people. Definitely. I, I totally agree that it's so important to replenish our population and bring in people that can contribute uh, new talents to the area. Um, our next question will be, uh, there are over 1,000 immigrant entrepreneurs in Cleveland. Uh, they are 38% more likely, they are 38% more likely to be entrepreneurs and U.S. born residents. What portion of the economic development office in the city of Cleveland would you be devoted to supporting immigrant entrepreneurs under your leadership? Well, it would be the, the, um, the Department of Economic Development. Again, um, the council does not administer. Uh, we can't hire, we can't fire, we can't deploy. Uh, that's an administrative function. So one of the things that I'm looking forward to uh, is with the seating of a new administration come January, what is their approach going to be uh, in, in the city as it regards to the immigrant community? At one time, under Governor Voinovich, uh, then under, um, uh, excuse me, uh, Mayor Voinovich, then Mayor Mike White, we had 
um, ethnic affairs coordinators. We had people that were there in place uh, to actually reach out to the immigrant community uh, and to partner with them. And that fell by the wayside. I was trying to think about that today. Uh, if, I believe it fell sometime under the um, under the Campbell administration or maybe even under uh, the Jackson administration. But there, that ethnic coordinator, which was right there in the mayor's office, that position is no longer there. I think that's critical to restaff and refill that position and then working with, again, the Economic Development Department and the immigrant community is how we can support um, small businesses, job creation, investment. Um, people need help. They need, they need a roadmap of how to maneuver not just City Hall, but the county, county programs as well, because um, especially during the, the COVID um, uh, pan pandemic, uh, we saw firsthand the, the, the implosion of small businesses, many of those uh, minority and immigrant uh, businesses that fell by the wayside. In fact, I'm dealing with one right now that I'm trying to keep afloat who's on the verge of going under. Uh, and they have language issues. So um, there's no doubt we have to have a better game plan in place. And again, I'm going to uh, I'm going to be looking to the new administration. I have a whole list of things that I want to talk to the new administration about new mayor about that I think need to be re-implemented, which was which were lunch in place or or uh, start anew with some a new direction, a new path. Great. Thank you very much. I'm sure that they would appreciate uh, any help they can get. Our next question would be, would you and how would you support adding new members and staff to the Community relationship, uh, Relations Board that represents the changing immigrant population in Cleveland, such as an African immigrant community liaison and Arab immigrant community liaison? I, I, I would certainly support that. But again, I would say uh, to the new administration, let's step back a moment and let's look at what the Community Relations Department is doing and what staff they have in place at present. Um, I would be dishonest to you to tell this, this you know, they'll be on this line um, and this call to say that I know everything that they're doing within a department. I don't, I don't. And I bet and if, if members of council, uh, all members of council, I think would be honest about it. They would all tell you the same thing. Um, Cause we're not clear at this point, exactly who's doing what I'm not clear of who's doing what down there. So I'd like to have a better understanding. If we can uh, fill positions uh, that are critical to assisting new immigrants, uh, especially the new, uh, the growing and emerging immigrant communities, then by all means, we need to do that. It's just common sense approach to good government and to helping people. In my own ward, I've had a, um, not, a not a great influx, but I've had folks from Liberia, Nigeria, uh, that have come into the community, that have moved into my ward. And um, and again, they have language issues and they need assistance, as I learned firsthand. So whatever we can do to assist uh, members of the, again, emerging communities, emerging populations, then we need to do it because um, it works to our advantage to do so. Thank you. Um, our next question will be, um focused on an issue that we've all been hearing in the news lately, and it reads, on average, 500 to 700 refugees are resettled to Cleveland every year from countries such as Nepal, Afghanistan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Somalia. The Biden-Harris administration announced that they will increase the refugee, refugee admissions to 125,000 a year nationally, up from 15,000 this year. This means Cleveland's three refugee resettlement agencies will receive three to four times as many families as they did this past, this past year. How do you plan to open Cleveland for these new residents and provide refugees with the opportunity to contribute to Cleveland? Well, again, I'm here to be supportive uh, in my role as a councilman. Uh, a lot of the assistance for these new, um, for these new residents are gonna have to come from the county. Uh, in partnership with the city. I want to go back to my original comment. Um, social uh, support programs are run by the county, not the city. And so we need to be with them and locked up in partnership where we can assist them where, where possible, especially in the area of housing, um, and just be, be supportive. And if we need to create a, um, 
a funding stream to support that, a revenue stream, uh, that I'm I'm for that. I'm I'm willing to look at whatever we have to do to support uh, the growing population in the city of Cleveland, so they can assimilate into our society, into our city, into our neighborhood. Because um, if not, we're, we're just going to have problems. We'll have issues. And and it, we're not we're not you know New York or Chicago or L.A. We have a massive population and massive issues. I've always maintained uh, with our present population, we should be manageable. And therefore, uh, we should be able to assist more so than other major metropolitan areas across the country. So I, I'm, it, it's one of, of being a welcoming, uh, being supportive and, um, and, and inclusive. And if we do that properly, then we're, gonna, we're, we're not going to have issues and, and people are going to assimilate into our, our neighborhoods and into our community and become, um, become part of this great ethnic mix that we have here, ethnic and racial mix, uh, this cosmopolitan community. Um, you know, I, I don't like the term melting pot. I like the term cosmopolitan. I like the richness and diversity of different people in different groups. So again, I'm here to be supportive. Thank you. That certainly helps. Um, our next question is one that uh, I am certainly very close to as I used to teach at Cleveland State and I had to um, uh, interact with international students. The question goes, annually, hundreds of international students graduate from Case Western, Tri-C, and CSU within, the, uh, within demand skills who are not being retained in the area to contribute to population and economic growth. Can you share what policies you will support to address this? You know, and, and I, don't under, I don't really fully understand why that's happening. So I'd like to get a better understanding from those of you maybe who can educate not only me, but members of council, why that is happening, why we are losing uh, that potential um, uh, uh, job base, uh, investment base, uh, homeowner base. I, I, I'd like to learn more why that is happening. Is it because they don't feel the jobs are here or they don't feel the city is welcoming or, so I, I'm not clear myself why that is happening. I'd like to learn more. I'd like to better understand it because that needs to be corrected. Uh, we have a unique opportunity. Uh, that's almost, I guess I, you could refer to that as a brain drain. Uh, we're losing talented people to other regions and I'm not really clear myself as to why. So Thank I'm you. looking for guidance myself. Thank you. I think that would be very helpful. Personally, I have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, as an instructor, I've dealt with some very bright students who at the end of their uh, courses and they're basically once they got their degrees, they try to find opportunities, but unfortunately uh, they couldn't. And uh, it really broke my heart to see those talented individuals that could have contributed to our economy to, to leave. And unfortunately uh, could not find opportunities that would fit their, their skill set. So. So that, and that, that's, that's an interesting point. And I would ask myself, then what, I would also ask, what is the corporate community? What is their role in this? What is their interaction with the with the universities and colleges? Um, you know, I'd like to I'd like to learn more about that as well. Definitely, thank you. I appreciate your interest in that. So, with that, I think we're at, at about twenty minutes. So, um, I'd like to see if there are any Q, uh, questions from the audience. Uh, I don't see any in the uh, chat box. So, um, we'll give it a couple of seconds and see if anybody else would like to ask a question from the councilman. If not, we have other questions that uh, we uh, we would be uh, prepared to ask. Nope, I don't see anything. So, Councilman, we'll have uh, I will present you with another question, and this one reads: uh, Cleveland has sister cities all around the world, such as Abdan, Nigeria, Lima, Peru, Gdansk, Poland, and Bangalore, India. What is your game plan for making Cleveland a more open? and internationally facing city to strengthen and grow these relationships? Well, you know, I would look to Global Cleveland, first of all, to help us in that capacity. Um, if you go back and look at many of the sister city partnerships that have been created in Cleveland, and you look at who the co-sponsor is, and most of those, you're, you're talking to them right now. Uh, I've sponsored legislation for Klaipeda, Pontus, uh in Lithuania, uh, I've sponsored and been supportive of other sister city partnerships. Uh, but again, it's, I'm, I look to the international community to assist us. You know, I'm, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not a world traveler. 
I've been out of the country uh, twice, once to Canada <laughs> and once to, Europe, once to Slovenia in 2012. So if you're looking to, to get information or guidance from a world traveler, I'm not the guy. So I'm looking to people who are, who do have the, the expertise and the knowledge of how do we create those partnerships, those linkages. I think the international community, I think the consulate corps, I've had a very good working relationship with the Slovenian Council General and the Honorary Council General from Lithuania, uh, and I've had an opportunity to interact with, with other Honorary Council Generals as well throughout my time in office. It's through people like those building partnerships, relationships, doing maybe, again, some international uh, connections or, 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 um, or business travel um, to learn more about the different populations, different parts of the world. I think that's all very important. And again, uh, the only issue I've always raised in the past with these is the cost is where do the funds come from uh, to send people abroad to create those partnerships? That's been an ongoing issue because when all of a sudden, I don't have to tell you, someone is on a plane going somewhere out of the country, right away you're reading about it in the newspaper. What, why are they going there? Why are they spending taxpayers' money? So there's a great reluctancy. I have found over the years for people uh, from public, for public office holders, even to go on trips, uh, maybe outside of members of Congress uh, or, or the Senate, but from a local standpoint, there's been a great reluctancy for fear that you're going to be looked upon as going on some, uh, you know, foreign junket uh, when you, when you could be going to really build some partnerships here. So I'm, I'm willing to, you know, I'm always open. I'm willing to listen. I, I'm at a point in my life. Uh, I want to. I don't want to speak as often as I have to. I want to listen more. I want to listen to what people have to say. And how do we listen to the experts or the people who are knowledgeable? And then implement actions or 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 a course or a policy to bring about what we're all trying to achieve. And that is partnerships, business opportunities, economic development, and growing our population. That's what I'm here to learn. Great. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, we have one question from the audience. We're fast coming to the end of uh, our timeline, but the question yeah. reads, are you able to propose legislation or find resources to support more safe housing for immigrants without credit, especially since we will have many more refugees coming? That, that's, a, that's a very interesting question. We're, we're limited because, again, uh, some of the challenge that we're faced about faced with right now is we don't know what's going to happen in Columbus with our income tax. Uh, there's an attack on the urban areas across this state. Uh, there's an attack uh, on our income tax. They're trying to take our income tax or with legislation, especially during the pandemic, where people would no longer pay income tax in the city of Cleveland where their employer is, but would pay it from their residence. This will have an uh, adverse effect, a major financial adverse effect in the city of Cleveland. So, you know, for me to say that uh, there's we have a pot of money or we can we have we can earmark a pot of money. Um, plus the fact that the city of Cleveland does not own housing. We own lots. Uh, and some people are, are very um, uh, surprised to hear that. When they think of all these abandoned houses in the city of Cleveland or homes that are potentially could be rehabbed, we don't own them. Uh, they're either owned by private individuals, banks, mortgage companies, uh, or the county uh, has taken them uh, as a result of uh, tax foreclosure. So um, we, have, we have major issues out there. I'd like to see uh, a more holistic approach to housing. As I speak to you right now, to all of you who are listening, there are 4,000 abandoned houses in the city of Cleveland. I don't believe all those houses need to come down. What could we do working with the county to, um, sec uh, to obtain those structures, the ones that what we call have good bones? And then what can we do uh, to rehab some of those structures so we can, we can provide housing or, we can, or those could be sold to um, quality landlords who then in turn would provide these to uh, at, a, at a reasonable rent uh, or lease uh, to uh, new, um, new immigrants to our region, to our area. Holistic approach, partnerships. We have to do more. We have to start thinking outside of the box. And I think we have to think, um, and I, I've, I've, been, I've been saying this more and more frequently, there has to be a more metropolitan 
um, approach to the city and county government. Um, I, 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 I'm a senior member of council and I just shake my head constantly. Uh, all the duplication, all the things that we need to be doing in, in, um, in lockstep that we're not doing. And so, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm saying to those of you who are listening on this line tonight, um, that in 2021, and as we go to the end of this year, we have to do things differently. We have to think more metropolitan, more regional as we approach issues. The little, you know, everybody, every community in Cog County wants to do their own thing. Every mayor, every uh, legislative body, every council wants to do their own thing. I, I believe we got to get beyond that. We got to get beyond it. We got to start a different approach to how we deal and approach things in this county. Too much duplication. We're spinning our wheels and we're not achieving what we need to achieve. Thank you, Councilman. I, I think we're at the end of our timeline. So uh, first, again, I'd like to thank everyone uh, once again for attending the Ward 8 Mayoral Candidate Forum, in particular to um, Councilman Polensic. Uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us here tonight and to speak for speaking to the international community. As a reminder, we invited every candidate running for election in this ward and everyone was given uh, the equal opportunity to reply. You can find the answers to these questions from every candidate who completed the questionnaire on our website. Again, we would like to especially like to thank you, the audience, for coming. It is your vote that determines the next, gener the next generation of Cleveland City leadership. Thank you again also to the interpreters for providing language access. We would also like to thank our incredible sponsors and partners who made these forums possible. They are Asia Inc., Asia Town Cleveland, Adondo Community of Greater Cleveland, British American Chamber of Commerce of Ohio, Building Hope in the City, City Club of Cleveland, Cleveland Council on World Affairs, Council on International Programs USA, Cleveland Cultural Gardens, Collaborative Chambers Alliance, Connecting Cleveland, Downtown Cleveland Alliance, Global Shapers Cleveland, NAACP of Cleveland, Ohio Progressive Asian Women's Leadership, Refugee, Refugee Response, Smart Development Inc., US Together, USCRI Cleveland, and the Young Latino Network. All these organizations perform wonderful work with and for our international community. Please find them on social media and on the web to learn more about the work they do. Have a good evening, everyone. And remember, remember we strengthen our city by welcoming the world.